when you live close to war all the time, you think you're going to die every now and then, every second. So the desire for life is very strong. Since I was very young, I knew that I was going to leave, I was going to make films, I was going to uh, record also life. Lebanese film director Philip Arakhtinji began his prolific career taking photographs of war-torn Beirut during the Civil War. Just a boy and fluent in French, Philip helped French journalists navigate the landscape. In their absence, he took photographs of daily life during wartime and dreamed of becoming a poet. Also, this fear of death made me take always pictures and film all the time. And I'm always in a worry that everything might disappear. So therefore, I'm always wearing a camera and always taking pictures because somehow I feel like this is what I'm seeing is for the last time I'm seeing it. So war taught me how to enjoy the present. Uh, war taught me how to always do something out of the present because I'm always afraid that this present might disappear. A force to parler de destruction, a force to parler de malheur, a force to parler de gens qui souffrent, je ne savais plus quoi dire, ni par où commencer. Je ne sentais plus que j'habitais ce pays, que je vivais dans ce pays. Je vivais beaucoup plus le poids de sa souffrance. Et les ruines, je les sentais en moi. Je n'arrivais pas à m'en dissocier. Hier à peine, il y avait eu 20 morts. A fear of destruction and death inspired in Philippe an unquenchable zest for life and a need to capture the present before it was gone forever. In addition to this urgency for the present, Philippe's body of work would always combine tragedy with joy and order with chaos. As Lebanese, usually they don't go back behind this big wall, which is the mountain. They don't go because behind the big wall, which is the mountain, is the desert, is Syria, is the desert. So Lebanese are those who are in front of an unknown, which leads them always or calls them always to travel, to leave. The Day of the Dead, Feast of Sacrifice. Today these women commemorate their deceased, more than 200,016 years of war. For every man gone, there is a mother left behind, a mother holding inside her resignation. His 1992 film, Through Mother's Eyes, documented the suffering of Lebanese women in the aftermath of the war and broke audience records in both Lebanon and France. The following year, he directed Beirut of Stones and Memories, which juxtaposed the poetry of Nada Tueni against images of a ravaged Beirut. Mon pays, mon visage, la haine et puis l'amour naissent à la façon dont on se tend la main. Mon pays que ta pierre est une éternité, mon pays mais ton ciel est un espace vide, mon pays que le choix ronge comme une attente, mon pays que l'on perd un jour sur le chemin, mon pays qui se casse comme un morceau de vague, mon pays où l'été est un hiver certain, mon pays qui voyage entre rêve et matin. It's true that in my films there is always a traveling story. Uh, in my first documentary, in The Acrobats, I did a traveling, uh, not a traveling, a journey of, of, of the acrobat from one place to another. It's true that I always see things in journey because somehow I have a feeling that I have been through many lives. And the, the, when you tell a story, you always tell a little bit of yourself. 
And because of myself having lived so many steps or so, so many um, lives, I feel like the only way of telling a story is through a journey. Ensuite, c'est le départ vers le prochain village. Il ne faut jamais dormir de nuit de suite au même endroit. Il ne faut pas abuser de l'hospitalité. Le shrif a déjà annoncé la troupe dans un autre village. Il faut marcher. saying that I'd li like to take a public service, public taxi, from time to time, when I can, because I've been very busy recently. Uh, not to take my own car, nor to take my motorcycle, just to keep an ear to the way people keep on talking, because we're, we work so much, we are from the office to meetings to casting, we don't hear stories anymore. And, and we get lost from what's really on the ground. So it's interesting to know how people talk and the stories of people. And it keeps your brain always curious about stories, about what people can still have to tell you. And also how people are thinking about today's world. Because you think of an idea, but then you realize that this idea is far away from what the real people want, uh, the people from the streets would like to hear and would like to listen to. In 2001, Philippe returned to Lebanon and founded a documentary production company. His first feature-length film, the musical Bosta, inspired a new generation of filmmaking in Lebanon. The thing is, before Bostan, people would make films about the war all the time. I mean, in Lebanon, only 2,000 people would watch them. So I thought I would take an old script of mine, which was very much festival kind of film, you know. It was people talking about their past and war and so on and so forth, and transform, transform it into a happy story. And that became the Bosta, the bus, the bus story. And the whole idea was to change that energy, go from the dark one to the light one. And actually you find lightness out of darkness. And that was the whole amount. And it did correspond to the need of the people. So the fact that so many people came and saw a Bosta had given a big push to the Lebanese films, specifically. War would ravage the director's homeland once again and would be there to document it, this time by combining fiction with reality in Under the Bombs, an award-winning film seen throughout the world. <laughs> Under, Under the Bombs was a different type of film. It came from my desire of, of, of bearing witness straight away from what happened when the war started in 2006. Usually when a war starts, I used to take my camera and go taking 
pictures, photography, or do reports or documentary. But this time I knew what it is to do a fiction. I knew how important is a fiction story. And we did a fiction story out of this boat, and we asked our actors to, take, to go out of it and to, um, to do as if she's coming to Lebanon instead of going outside Lebanon. And we improvised for 10 days just after the war, creating real scenes with real stuff, but with false stories. It was a mixture between scripted elements and real or improvised stuff. It was a very interesting melting pot. Actually, in all my films, I love mixing the real and the non-real, the fiction and the non-fiction. Action, from the half a second, you're talking. Wait, 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 sorry, 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 please. And action. Philippe has constantly reinvented himself in cinematographic forms and studies never seen before in Lebanon. In Heritages, the director tells the story of his own family's exile and memories, five generations of ancestors seeking refuge from war and massacres. Now, I've hesitated to do such a film because it's about us. It's about my family and so on and so forth. So I did a 12-minute film, a short and I showed it to many people. And everybody said, but this is my story. So I decided, okay, if my story looks like their story, let's tell a story, which is mine. But let's tell a story. And then I started combining what I had. So I took films from my photography from me, archive from real archives, and I combined, and I created something which doesn't look like anything else which is heritage, it's not exactly a documentary, not exactly a fiction, it's a um, UFO. As in life, art comes full circle. Today, Philippe has once again devoted himself to photography, but now his images are inspired by pleasure. 